And uh, this the lineup. David King, David Omaregi, who's been going very well, Jarrett Eaton and Peter Svoboda. So Jarrett Eaton standing clear of the rest at the moment. It's a pretty good lineup, this actually. And there is David King, new personal best, 13.54 this season for the 22-year-old. Alongside him, though, I think is the man who might be the future of British men's sprint hurdling. 20-year-old David Omaregi, down to 13.24 in Berlin a couple of weeks ago, ran 13.25 in July, but it was just too late to be considered for Rio, but how will he go here? Alongside him, Janet Eaton, US indoor champion, fourth of the world indoors, a new personal best this season, 13.25, so pretty evenly matched in times with Omaregi. And Peter Svoboda of the Czech Republic was the European indoor champion back in 2011, was a sub-13.30 runner outdoors, but so many problems with uh, his Achilles since then, numerous operations, I think his best days perhaps behind him. But Omaregi and Eaton, Again, on form, although it didn't go to form at all in the, in the women's 100 hurdles, on form you might expect a little bit of a battle between Jarrett Eaton and David Omaregi. It's almost a heat haze on the banks of the Tyne. Strange days. David King, David Omaregi, Jarrett Eaton and Peter Svoboda. This is the penultimate track event. The men's 500 metres to come, which will be fascinating. And a grand crowd still here. I just asked a moment ago the crowd how many of them were running in the uh, Great North Run tomorrow, and so many hands went up. Is it 57,000, was it, starting tomorrow? Slightly larger than the field for the men's 110 metres hurdles. King, Omaregi, Eaton, and Svoboda. Well, was a little twitch there from David King, but cleanly away now, and Omaregi always oh, just falling back there immediately at the first hurdle, and Jarrett Eaton now clear with Svoboda. Eaton, Omaregi getting back into it, though, Omaregi, he's, well, he's all over the place, and Eaton now hits the barriers, and it's Omaregi coming through to take it. What oh, a strange race, and Omaregi takes the victory. That's a raw pace, brought him through at the end, but it wasn't the cleanest race, but he tidied things up after a, an early stutter and Eaton then stumbled a bit over the barriers and Omaregi was there to take advantage and take the victory. I think David's very happy that other people around him made mistakes as well, causing him to pull himself back in, into this great race of his. It's always important just to take these victories and you make mistakes along the way, you've got to learn how to handle them under a lot of pressure and he clattered one there, I think there was arms that clashed again which caused a little bit upset with some of his hurdles, but you know what, he takes the victory, he'll be happy to finish the season there. Yeah, good way to look at it from on high here because their, their, their arms were interlocking. I mean, Svoboda was out, he was, almost, he was almost out of his lane and off the track, but the two men coming through here, after a very good start by Svoboda, you just see a bit of a tangle. Yeah, you'll always see a little bit of clash in there of arms. As one pulls their trail arm through, you can see there, that's where they had that big bash, and that could have caused a lot of hassle there. What the end result will be, will Eaton himself complain? Who knows? It's the end of the season, he may just take it on the chin. Yes, I mean, there are rules to be obeyed, but certainly in, in, in this meeting, they do tend to be a little bit more lenient with things there. But certainly Omar Egi was interfering, he was out of his lane briefly and interfering with Jarrett Eaton, but it's confirmed at the moment the result. 13.75 victory for David Omar Egi just ahead of Jarrett Eaton and King and Svoboda.